everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is America. I'm a fourth year medical student here in Texas in the United States and I recently just took my step two CK exam. I've been getting lots and lots of questions and requests to do a video much like I did over my step one exam in which I walk you through how I studied, prepared for my step two CK exam and how I did. So first, let me give you a little timeline of the test. So the step two CK exam is a one day, nine hour exam, 318 questions with a 15 minute break that you can divvy up between the 40 question sections any way you want. It is a test that encompasses all of the clinical knowledge that you hopefully gain during your third year so it is a pretty massive test and it's very important some say that it's not as important as step one because step one is harder the step two exam is very important as well but residency programs allegedly like to use the step one score a lot more for like screening purposes but still the step two exam is very very important and I had to do really really well on it because I want to go into a surgery program so I just need to be as competitive as possible. And this exam was kind of like my last chance to give my resume like something. I mean, my grades, they were already, they're what they are. My step one exam, already what it is. Pretty much everything is out of my control already. This was the only thing I had left to like lay down my resume and be like, that's all I got. So I started my third year rotations in July of 2018. I have family medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, and psychiatry. For the the first half of my third year. I didn't start doing U World questions for step two until psychiatry. So when I was in psychiatry, I started doing the U World psychiatry questions. In my next rotation, internal medicine, I did the internal medicine U World questions. And then my next rotation, so I did the surgery U World questions. And then my next rotation, which was neurology, I did the neurology U World questions. While I was also in neurology, besides doing the neurology U World questions, I also started reviewing my pediatrics U World questions. Next, I had my emergency medicine rotation, and that rotation is pass fail. So I mostly just use that rotation to study for other things, like my OB and psychiatry questions. And then I finished my emergency medicine rotation, and thus my third year, on June 21st, 2019. By that time, I had basically reviewed all of the UWorld questions that UWorld had and at that point I just started doing a whole bunch of random UWorld questions, an NBME exam, a UWorld self-assessment before I took my USMLE Step 2 CK exam on July 21st. I didn't get my results until August 28th so I waited a very long time to figure out how I did on this test but I finally got my results. <sighs> so I took two practice exams before I took the real thing. I took NBME number six and scored the equivalent of a 247, which is good because everybody should improve about 10 points from their step one exam. The average step two exam is a 244, so that was a little bit above average. I then took a UWorld self-assessment test on July 15th, so about a week before I was taking the real thing, and I scored a 266 on that. So it was a pretty big jump, I mean, between a 247 and a 266. I was very, I would have been very happy to land somewhere in the middle. So I went ahead and I took my step two CK exam on July 21st. And let me tell you guys, after I took that test, I was freaked out because I didn't feel like I've ever done worse on an exam in my entire life. There was a point in the middle of that test, that nine hour grueling test, I had three questions left, three questions. So I didn't have time to even look at the paragraph or even the STEM question or the answer choices because I had five seconds left to answer three questions. And so I was just like, DCA, that's all I got. <laughs> And then the question, and then the test closed. And I remember after I took that block of 40 questions, I was just like, oh my gosh. I literally had to use three minutes of my 15 minute break that you get for this nine hour exam to just like, like talk to myself and somehow just pep talk myself into getting through the rest of this exam because I was just, so stunned that I just guessed on three questions of one of the most important tests of my life. And I thought that it would get better from there, but no, I finished every block with five seconds to spare and guessing on at least one question. All the other questions were basically like, I don't know, it could be D, E, or F. 
I have no idea. Let's pick D. Oh, E sounds good. I'm not really sure why. I've never heard of any of these answer choices, so I'll pick B. Like, I just felt like I wasn't really using logic for any of these questions. And so by the time I finished it, I wasn't even sure that I passed. And that was really weird for me because I had just taken these two practice exams that said I would do really well and I left step two feeling like absolute dirt. Like I had failed the exam. Not only did I not do well, but I honestly felt that I messed it up completely and just ruined everything that I had worked for. It was a horrible, horrible feeling. I did not feel this way after step one, but everybody kept telling me, America, you have to trust your practice exams. If you thought the test was hard, so did all the other people who took your test. You're still gonna be in the same place on the gradient, it's just that the test was harder. So after a month and an additional week of waiting for my score, I finally got it. And luckily I can say that yes, I did pass. I did not fail. And not only did I pass, but I actually did pretty well, which I'm so happy to say. You guys don't honestly know how hard it is to be a med student on YouTube and feel a lot of pressure to be very smart and very, good at research and exercise and friends and social life and entertaining as well. It's a lot of pressure. So I'll just throw up my score report right here. Drum roll please. Uh, so I scored a 262 on my step two CK exam, which is pretty good because I improved 25 points from my step one exam. And to be honest, I never thought I'd be one of those people who would ever score above a 260 because in medical school, people who score above a 260 on their board exams are like the, the incredibly smart people in your class who have just been smart from the beginning and ace everything and do tons of research and just kill medical school, slam it out of the park. And um, I'm not one of those people at all. I really, I mean, I tried my best in medical school and stuff, but um, I've never, I mean, I don't have my rank and my GPA and everything is just not really consistent with this step two board exam. But still, I'm not going to like completely take away credit from myself. I'm very proud of myself. I worked very hard and I found finally found a study regimen that worked for me that I want to share with all of you so that we can all kill these board exams and be the doctors that we want to be. Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about how I studied for my step two exam. So during my rotations, I would come home and I would be extremely tired, which you will probably be as well because you just worked an eight hour shift of feeling maybe slightly stupid, a little bit useless, um, and that is very grueling on the mind and the spirit. So coming home, I just didn't want to do anything related to school, but somehow managed to put a couple hours of step two studying in after I would get home. Now I didn't always study. It was just when I could, when I really felt like I could, which was most days, but definitely allow yourself some days in third year to just like chill at home and take care of your, your mind and your spirit because third year is very, very tough. And if you're someone who is goofy and happy and, and overbearing like myself, your personality doesn't always mesh well with people in medicine. And so that can be kind of hurtful to your spirit as well. So I came home from third year many times feeling very, very down and I didn't want to study at all. But I think somewhere along the line, towards the end of my third year, I realized that the only person I'm hurting by not studying, at least trying my best when I got home, is myself. I'm not sticking it up to the man or the guy who gave me a bad eval in my third year by making my step two score in jeopardy. At some point, and I think it was during my internal medicine rotation, it just kind of clicked in my head that I have to do this. I. So I am not going to be a third year forever. These people will not talk to me like this forever. One day I'm going to be taking care of patients, which is the whole point. And I want to be able to know what the heck I'm talking about. So I'm just going to forget the nonsense, all this 
bad talk that I give myself in my head. And I'm going to just take control of what I can take control of. And what I can do is I can study for this freaking board exam. And you don't have to do much. You don't have to go crazy. Just do 40 questions of UWorld when you get home from your rotation or during your rotation if you have some spare time. And then try to watch an online med ed video. Uh, I try to watch about three a day, whatever works for you. For me, I loved online med ed, watching online med ed way more than I love doing your world questions because this is passive learning and your world actually requires active learning and reading, which I don't enjoy doing, but it's a necessary evil. So while I was in my third year rotations, I would try to watch three online med ed videos a day. And this is a very nifty book. It's the whiteboards companion book that they sell for, um, it says hundred dollars on the back, but I think they they have a sale and basically what they have is a video in which they go over a whiteboard like this and they teach you all about coronary artery disease. Doing three videos a day, learning the subject matter, and then I would try to do 40 UWorld questions as well. So I was learning the subject matter and then I was testing myself on UWorld. And most of the time, while I was in my psychiatry rotation, for example, I would try to do online med ed videos about psychiatry and then do the UWorld questions about psychiatry. And I did that for all of my rotation blocks. When it came time for a dedicated step two studying, I did random UWorld questions and random online med ed. I mostly chose the online med ed videos over the subjects that I sucked at the most because that's the thing about things that you suck at. They require more attention. And even though you want to ignore them and pretend that you don't suck because that's better on the ego, you have to admit to yourself, I suck at OB, America. I suck at OB. It says it every time in all of my test results that I suck at OB and endocrine. What can I do? So I gave OB and endocrine extra love when I was studying. I watched all the OB online med ed videos three times. I knew I had to if I wanted to do well on the step two exam. And I did the UWorld questions over OB, endocrine and respiratory, which are the subjects that I suck at twice. During my dedicated step two studying time, I did 80 UWorld questions over random material. And then I tried to watch upwards towards seven online med ed videos every day. I would be learning about pulmonary embolisms. I would write notes as he talked throughout the video and then I could write additional notes over here in this blank page. And then when I would be doing my year old questions and I would be reading the ones that I got wrong or the questions that I had flagged and had questions about, I would look at the description where it tells you the explanation as to why that is the answer. And then I would write it into my book. So for instance, there was probably a year world question talking about acute tubular necrosis and so I put it next to the section of acute kidney injury. And my form of review was watching all of these online med ed videos multiple times. Like I, I literally may have seen every online med ed video twice, some probably five times. There's been thousands of people, including myself, who have done this before you. And we had days where we failed, where we felt horrible, where we felt like we couldn't go on, and why did we choose medicine? But somehow we persevered, and definitely you can as well. That sometimes always made me feel better, uh, made me get through the hard times, is knowing that there were people who have done this before me. And if other people can do it, why can't I? And that was basically all I did to study for step two. I did online med ed videos and then I used the UWorld step two QBank. I tried to keep it very, very simple as few resources as possible because that's just better on my brain and stress levels. If you want an active look into what studying for step two was like, I have an actual vlog of the whole experience and I can leave that in the description box below. I wanted to thank everybody again for just being such wonderful fans and subscribers. In medicine, it's very easy to want to get competitive with one another and want to one up one another and want to see me fail as a medical student but I haven't actually witnessed a lot of that. Most of you guys are very positive and want me to do well in my life, which is very refreshing and reassuring and definitely helpful for me and my spirit and mind to get through medical school, which has been very tough, but luckily I've taken all of my board exams. I have no more shelf exams. I literally don't really have, I don't have any more exams until I graduate medical school. So it's smooth sailing from here and of course, it's always a large part due to my wonderful subscribers like yourself. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you all so much. 
thank you thank you thank you and i will see you in my next video goodbye everybody